Well, you're pretty much going to be okay with just leaving the facility as it is. You may want to go in and configure the trap level and that's with the logging trap command. Basically what this is going to do is this is going to limit the type of syslog error message that you send to the syslog server based on the level of those messages. So there's eight levels, it's zero through seven. Zero is like critical, I will see in the next slide. You can refer to them either by their numerical value or by their description. So for instance, uh, debugging is level seven. So you could either put logging trap seven or logging trap debugging. Again, we'll see that in the next slide. Uh, what is important to understand is that when you set the logging trap level, what you're actually doing, you're turning the trap level on for the level that you specify and all levels below it. So if you configure logging trap five, you're not only sending traps that are level five, you're also sending traps that are four, three, two, one, and zero. So it's that level and everything below it. So keep that in mind because one question you might end up seeing is something like send all possible traps to the remote syslog server and in that case you can just go ahead and put in logging trap 7 or logging trap debugging and that will send 7 through 0 to the uh, syslog server. So this is the syslog trap levels as you can see there's 8 of them 0 through 7 and there's a keyword that corresponds with them as I said earlier you can use either the numerical value for the level or the level keyword so if you say logging trap errors that's the same thing as saying logging trap 3. It, down here it does say that the uh, default varies by platform but is generally 7 now that's not specific to what we're using when, when we're sending these to a remote host via the logging host configuration the default logging level is actually six as we saw in the last slide or informational luckily you can check this out with the uh, verification command that we'll get to later which is show logging it'll show you what the trap level is it will give you the level keyword but not the level number probably saw this one coming but any dork worth the salt is going to of course throw in a picture of Admiral Akbar and the infamous it's a trap when talking about trapping and we'll just get rid of that now so here we are again this is the uh, command so it's logging trap and then we've invoked the uh, Cisco iOS help with the question mark and you can see here you can either put in the levels numerically 0 through 7 or you can put in the word and luckily for us it shows what keywords correspond here so you don't have to memorize you know emergencies is equal to zero or errors is equal to three it'll show you in the output of the command now I say that in the real world on the CLI you won't have to memorize that for those of you that are taking a Cisco certification exam I would definitely have these memorized because I can almost guarantee you that there will be questions on there saying you know you want to set the logging trap level to three which word would this be you know there are going to be questions that quiz you on correlating these keywords with the actual severity level so next up is the source interface command and following this will be the origin id command and both of these are used basically to help you differentiate which devices sent which messages on the uh, syslog server itself so by default your syslog messages are going to be stamped with the IP address of the interface that the router uses to reach the syslog server. So in our case, my uh, little lab here, not a big deal. I only have one interface and that is a fast ethernet interface, but you might have multiple exits from your router and that's fine you know it'll stamp with that. In a lot of networks your devices are going to be set up with a loopback address. Uh, loopback zero generally but it could be a different loopback number anyways it's going to have a unique uh, IP address that doesn't change whereas in the future you might decide oh you know we're gonna re IP this fast Ethernet interface and so then you have messages in your syslog server that are stamped with the uh, 10.100.1.1 and so you change it to the 10.100.123 subnet so now how are you going to correlate those to make sure that they came from the same device if you're set up with a loopback address it doesn't change and there really isn't too many reasons why you would want to change that you can use that as your identifier so instead of being stamped with this IP address it will be stamped with the loopback address so that's what I did in this case I did logging source interface loopback zero so that any syslog messages sent from R1 will now be stamped with the 1.1.1.1 uh, loopback zero 
interface IP address, which, you know, in, in this case, it makes it much easier to figure out which device sent it. You know, this is router one, but even if it wasn't that clear that this was router one, at least you would have consistency in your syslog messages in case you had to re-IP any of the uh, other interfaces on your router. And next up is the origin ID, and this is going to fulfill a similar function as the source interface command. So basically this is going to add a unique stamp to the syslog messages that you send. Uh, you can have this stamp be the host name, uh, the IP address, whether that's IPv6 or IPv4, or you can write your own text, which is pretty cool. Uh, the origin identifier is not added to messages sent to local destinations, so you're not going to see this show up in your logging buffer or on the messages that pop up during your console session, but it is used for the syslog messages are sent to a remote syslog server and again it's used to differentiate these messages on the syslog server itself. So now if you're going to roll your own and create your own um, ID string, so you use logging origin ID string. If you're going to use spaces you need to use quotation marks. So if you wanted to use logging origin ID string packet lab under bar one that's perfectly fine. There's no spaces in there. You don't need to use quotation marks. But if you want to use logging origin ID string packet lab space one, you'll have to do logging origin ID string open quotation mark packet lab space one closing quotation mark. Uh, just keep that in mind because this will throw an error if you don't use the quotation marks for strings that have a space in them. And here we see the origin ID in action. Here's the command logging origin hyphen ID. Don't forget the hyphen. And then your options hostname IP and then string. Uh, initially I had put logging origin ID hostname and you can see here the first message that came through had R1 which is the hostname of this router included in the syslog message. Uh, then I did IP which used 1.1.1.1 because I still had that source interface uh, command configured so it was using the loopback zero interface and then I created my own string. The first string did not have any spaces so it was packet lab under bar R1 and then the last one had spaces and it was stop collaborate and listen. As you can see you can get as lame and creative as you want with these uh, unique text strings from here. So those are the common options you're going to run into when you're sending syslogs to a remote server. There are a number of other options. Um, I'll touch on those in a different lesson but those are the ones that you're going to want to be aware of. And so that brings us to verification. And Really there's only one command for verification of your logging setup and that is show logging. And so you issue the show logging and you can see it shows the logging setup for a different destination. So you've got your syslog, you know, generally that's enabled. Uh, you've got your console, your monitor, your buffer, uh, your logging exception size, but these ones we're not going to concentrate on. So the ones that we're looking at today are the configuration items that are associated with the remote syslog server setup via the uh, logging host command. These are some of the options that we didn't get into, but count and timestamp logging are disabled. Um, again, those are for a different day. Uh, we can see that our trap logging is informational and that is level 6 so we probably left that as a default we can see the server that it's logging to and that's about it you're probably going to get a lot more information because remember we said that the commands almost all the commands I'm trying to think if there are any significant ones that don't start with logging and I'm not thinking of any right now but if you do a show run include logging that will show you more information than this because this will show you it'll show you your facility and everything else here I thought there was another command for verification I'm probably forgetting it uh, it might have been a debug but anyways this is one that I know of and like I said it gives you limited information on there